No, not, 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 you, you, not lying. You are now. developing some of Trump's negative Ticket traits is now. Is it fake news right now? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Come on, tell us no, about it now. What I was saying at that point was that his reaction and response to North Korea and, no, and it's Syria, not North Korea. That's not, Syria. No, no, but it was oh, also related. Bomb, he, he, he bombed was, the airport in Syria. But it was also related to sending North Korea a message, and BBS, was, was no as message? well. And, 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 and how'd that work out? <laughs> yeah. It didn't work out at all. But anyway. Well, actually, did, did North Korea send, shoot some bombs out yesterday? <laughs> yes. Just yesterday. They right? fired one pit yesterday, as a matter yeah, of fact. Okay. Things Come are on. not working out well at all. Okay. Yeah. So Donald much for Trump. Things are being not working out well for the American people. Yes. It's sad. Sad day. Uh, we got a great panel. Uh, we're missing uh, one of our sports brothers, the one and only Jamie Harris of the Amsterdam News. He's on the disabled list, but Bobby Childs, open line correspondent, sports correspondent, is in the house. Way to go, Bobby. I was sitting uh, right next to uh, referee's sister. Good She's morning. not wearing no. a referee Take outfit no today. Take no nonsense. Uh, t- oh, that's right. right. Take that's no right. Right. nonsense. Take no ish. Take, Take no, no bleep. Take no ish, that's what it was. Take yes. no bleep, uh, Miss Nilla Khan, who... Um, uh, you were very, kind of busy this week, right? You were aware. Were, were, were you did a radio show or what? what was that? Yeah, I actually did. Um, a, I think I sent you guys a picture. Sirius? So I did a panel at Sirius. You saw it, right? Yeah. So shout out to Karen Hunter. Uh, she did a. Congratulations. Thank you. She did a really great conversation. Uh, it was called Muslim in America. So basically, I believe this was the second one she did. She did one last year too. So bringing Muslim Americans from different backgrounds coming and sitting, talking about ourselves, what we've done, our stories, and you know, this is her effort to try and humanize the Muslim community, which nobody is doing. So. How many Muslims are there in America? We're only about 1% of the population. That's really? it. That's wow. it. Yep, that's it. Which is why. And they all live know, in Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Dearborn. <laughs> right, right, right. We're everywhere, Judge. We're everywhere. Thank um, you. But in the U.S., yeah, it's only about 1% of the population. But the largest portion of that is African American. And they're almost never brought into the conversation it's always portrayed it's always portrayed as something that just came here it's a newer thing you know these people but islam has been in the u.s since before the establishment of the united states like we're talking about way even before even before the u.s was established and then and then a huge yes yes, and a huge portion of the slaves who were brought over were muslim as well yes Yep. Uh, we also have Akili Buchanan. Uh, uh, Good morning, noted, folks. Happy Mother's Day. We have noted historian, uh, Emmy Award winning documentarian, taking care of Billy Biz, as always. Brother, it's always good to see you. Thank you. I'm so uh, glad to be here yeah. again. And uh, one and only, he's all dressed up, ready to preach. <laughs> no, yeah. The, uh, the one and only. <laughs> I'm not a preacher. <laughs> Larry oh, oh, uh, You have Although, a prophetic voice, brother. Even though, even though he's scheduled voice. to be at a church today yes. at 11 a.m., mm-hmm. t- tell okay. us about that. Let's, let's, make, let's be clear. It's the. It's not a church. Right. It's the. I give a shout out to the folks at the Ethical Culture Society of okay. Essex County. Okay. There you I'm go. speaking for them uh, this morning at 11 a.m. 516 Prospect Street in. Ex- actually in Maplewood. I always Maplewood. thought it was right South on the border, on the South right, Orange and right. Maplewood. Right. What's but, the topic? Uh, uh, today they asked me to come and talk about the work of the People's Organization for Progress. Cool. All right. Cool. And they are giving. Our vice chairwoman Ingrid Hill, good sister, the lo- local sister. hero award. All right, excellent. So Congratulations, it's, it's a, sister. That's yeah. right. She's she's well deserved. Is she a mother? No, I don't think I don't yeah. think Ingrid's All a right. mother. Well, uh, happy, happy Sister's mo- Day. Happy yeah. Mother's Day to everybody. Yeah, everybody anyways. out there. By the way, that's the one knowing Mr. Larry Ham, uh, who's head of People's Organization for Progress, always putting it down and uh, keeping it down. And we uh, appreciate you all being here. Uh, the open line headline, of course. Is the vice closing <laughs> on Sir Tweet a lot? That's what Sir I call him. That's Sir Tweet a lot. Yeah, tweet a lot. <laughs> uh, That's funny. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Every time uh, he gets caught in a lie or caught in some kind of drama, he starts tweeting. And uh, he goes to Twitter and just drops stuff. And we're going to get your thoughts, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, is the vice uh, about to close on this joker? Because I think it's, it's long overdue. It's, we're 115 days into his presidency, not even four completed months yet. 115 days. That won't come up until next Saturday. But this joker has got to go. He's got to go. I'm, I'm, I'm with Maxine Waters, California congressman. He's got to go. He's got to be impeached. He's got to go. I'm, Pickett may not agree, but he's horrible. And this past week, he has tweeted himself 
into mad drama. Talking, he, he fired the FBI head. Unprecedented. A, a yes. crazy situation. Yes. But the reason out, he fired him was all bogus. It was bogus. If it turns out that that firing was done with the intent to avoid the, or to, to continue <clears throat> the investigation into the connection with Russia, he could probably be charged with uh, ob he, obstructing. He admitted it on camera when he did his interview with uh, Lester Holt of NBC. He says, you know, I'm thinking, you know, the Trump and the Russia thing, he said that exactly after being asked yeah. about the firing of Comey. Yes. If you go to N NBC and look at that interview, he says it. He doesn't understand that his how his, that his mind gets him into into trouble. He this that interview will be the part of the grounds for impeachment. So, so, so Bob, what how, how we does, have to do again is vote enough Democrats on in 2018 so that impeachment proceedings on everything that's been done beforehand can now come to the surface. Well, the big how, does well, 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 how does obstruction work? You you so you know being the the well, legal mind here. Well, it, it works uh, like this, Bobby. He must be uh, have com committed. Oh, okay. oh see, mic was so, off. so everybody we, missed what you were just saying. Yeah, yeah, Donald you want Trump to say it did again? that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Electronically. Uh, right. <laughs> Essentially, the the essence of of any kind of impeachment is for uh, either criminal conduct or conduct that is beyond the uh, pale um, in order to impeach the president of the United States. And if, if it can be shown and proven that his conduct in terminating and firing Comey was directly related to the, the investigation, to prevent the investigation, impeachment would be appropriate. But it's a very, very difficult process. So how remember, um, how Larry, missing. Larry, you, you might. We keep talking about impeachment, but what we're not talking about is the mechanism in between where we are now and an actual impeachment. The question is, who would bring those charges? The, the, the charges would be uh, brought by essentially the Senate. Uh, probably one of the committees that the that the whole Russian uh, thing is being looked at would, would and that, would be, that would be the Senate the Intelligence Committee. The Senate Intelligence Committee is looking at it right now. And, and, that would be the, and Senate the House Intelligence, Intelligence Committee also. That would be the Senate Intelligence Committee. What about the committee. Judiciary Committees of both uh, houses? Yeah, it, it could be that on the obstruction issue. Okay. But yes. you have to get the stupid Republicans to go well, along with it. And right now, point. that's, 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 the, problem. that's, that's the problem. They're not going along with it. That's the problem. That's not going to happen. That's why I insist that brothers and sisters go out, get registered, chat it up, because we have our work to do. And in fact, if we really want Trump to get out, we, ha we can do it. We have to vote Democrats, progressives, in our local state uh, 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 seats, congressmen, right. senators, and, that, and then we can urge them to do what they need to do on or our force behalf. force them to do it. So, Judge, but, I, wait, I have wait. another question for the judge. How much will this rest on who the replacement will be? Because, I mean, that will tell a lot in terms of his motives, right, in doing this? In, in terms of the replacement, you mean the, the vice president? FBI, uh, oh, FBI no, 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 director. No, no, no. Oh. The Comey replacement. The, the oh, eight, oh, eight, oh, that's going to be candidates. critical. Yeah. That's going to be critical. Right. And guess who has, has, has the... Uh, Beauregard guess Sessions. Who, guess who appoints that position? Attorney General. The, the, the and, attorney and the general and, and, the the president. President. and the president. He's doing the, the interviewing. Yep. And he's Sessions. likely, the person that's going to be chosen is likely to be someone that uh, President Trump feels will not threaten his presidency. Right. So do you think that, you know, uh, 45 sent to Sessions, here's one of the interview questions, ask them if they'll be loyal to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, impeachment is a very difficult process. And, uh, you know, we've seen it in the past. And it's it's a it's an awesome process that's going to consume a lot of time and a lot of energy. But and I think Donald Trump is approaching the point where a lot of people will be saying out out there in the public, yes, let's look at impeaching him, 
based on his performance but, thus far. But they have to produce that smoking gun. Yes. And they haven't produced it yet. No. Well, it's coming because I, Sir I Tweet a lot. I don't know. I, I think his lying, he's lying I think like I think lying his like reasoning a... to the firing of Comey and the lie about that will both implicate him, implicate Rosenstein. I th I think we've got enough uh, I don't know what the exact well, language is in impeachment crime, high crimes misdemeanors or on uh, being unfit uh, mentally or or uh, constitutionally, meaning the, your capability of doing it. But I think there's enough already. If we had majority uh, uh, Democrat House and Senate, we have enough to do it already. We have, if we had people in the House and Senate, we could demand our various branches of government and institutions to release his taxes, to do, we could put the pressure on. But I think we, we have we, enough right we, now we, we, to impeach. We, we might have enough now if we were dealing with a group of fair and impartial mm -hmm. people. We don't. This is a partisan struggle. This is a power struggle of the nth magnitude. These people are holding on with all their might, and they're going to do everything they can That's to true. hold on. That's true. And until they produce something that is incontrovertible, that something that's so bad that it will actually cause a split within the Republicans to make them enough of them peel off so that there'll be some kind of bipartisan consensus that this need to happen it won't happen because remember you know what? and you're right Te Terry Graham Terry Graham one of our writers our, our down listeners with Nixon to the end it wasn't until there was the absolute Terry. proof you got Terry Graham one of our our, listen, our our viewers out there who agree with you and says it's not going to happen Slade you're naive because Congress is corrupt no, I, mean, I, I mentioned that from we, the beginning. I'm not that naive, but I yeah, will say this. The beginning of the end is near because of the Friday tweets, six and all. But the one that really is going to burn his ass, and I'm going to tell you this one, is the one that he talked uh, about James Comey. He said, James Comey better hope there are no tapes of our conversations before he starts leaking to the press. Yeah, that, that was, was a, the tweet uh, that was that's going to get him. A polite threat. That's to, a threat. Yeah. No polite that's threat. That's not even a polite. <laughs> that's yeah, a that's threat. That's a blatant threat. So send us, keep sending us your thoughts. Let us know. Do you think he's going to be impeached or not if you're watching on Facebook or wherever you're watching? Mm -hmm. So Craig Harrison says, it's never going to happen, not with Ryan and McConnell. People, please get the folks who don't listen to shows like this to get out and vote. For once, please do something for our people. Uh, and Selena... Uh, Barkley Morris says he will hang himself with his mouth. Well, with his <laughs> fingers. He'll hang himself with his damn fingers because he's tweeting all over the place and lying, getting caught in lies, and you would think that the media would, you know, they're, they're, they're slowly, but I mean, Fox News is an, an embarrassment. The way they covered this doggone thing. I was surprised that Janine Pirro asked him the questions that she asked him uh, for her show. Well, why were you yesterday. surprised that she asked those questions? No, I was surprised she asked a, asked a question about the tapes. Yeah. And, and yeah. Then, then he came up with a stupid-ass excuse for him. But, yeah. but, but it's interesting. Journalists like... like She's not even like a journalist. Fo no, I, I didn't finish. Journalists housed in... Or, quote-unquote, journalists housed in... Uh, institutions like Fox, what have you, they they create the veneer of objectivity, the veneer of right. asking the hard questions, and they. But it's, they're they're all setups. It's very clear what Fox News represents. Oh God, yes. It's very clear what Gene Pir who Gene Pirro represents and what interests uh, they represent. But they have to create, as Chomsky said, they have to manufacture consent by by masking their lies in the cover of, oh, it's a fair question, it's a right. objective question. Well, their, question. their new thing is that people like Hannity and, you know, the nightly folks that, right. oh, we're not journalists, we're just pundits. Right, so they're coming out we're just, They actually are openly it. admitting now well, that they're not, they're not journalists. journalists. Well, well, let me right. raise this right. question be, and, and get everybody's reaction. On the, on the day that um, President Trump, I hate saying that, 45, uh, on the day that he Sir, tweet terminated... Is, Sir, Sir, tweet a lot. lot. Yeah, it's a liar a lot. I like mean, that, too. <laughs> on the day that he That's terminated cool. Comey, 
Did you find it strange that he would have a meeting with the Russian ambassador? Oh, or the two Russians. That, that was yeah. Two yeah. so, so many people. No, but, I mean, two wait, wait, and, he go, and he doubled down on that, which is his administration decided not to allow any U.S. media yes. to cover it. Outrageous. And but then, the, but and then there's were. pictures that come out afterwards, right. him smiling, high-fiving, which they're supposedly upset about because the agreement was, well, don't send anything out, and they sent it out. So either he got played or he's continuing to play people with that one. But that's, un that's unheard of. But that the, Russian, the Russian media, the, Russian arm, the media arm of the Russian government was in, took the pictures. It right. was the first to send out uh, photos all over the world of Trump and Kislyak and the other Russian uh uh, and, that's that's my, and that's my point. Lavrov. That's my point. He, he, his administration. You can't came make out, this up. Well, I know his administration you supposedly told up. them, "You're you're okay to be there. We, we're not going to have any other press, but don't send out any photos." And they did exactly what you said they did. They sent and them you out. Had, and you had Lavrov and, mocking the press during that brief. Mocking the American press. The American press, press basically yeah. saying, and, and "Oh, call me. You're kidding. You're yeah. kidding." And, 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 and so the other reports are that Putin asked. 45, so tweet a lot, so lie a bunch of a whole bunch more <laughs> to actually have the meeting. So just let's say that's all true, that that request came in and it's for a noble purpose, right? Which I doubt, but if there's a noble purpose, given what you did to fire Comey, why would you still hold that meeting? The question becomes, who's advising him right. inside the no White one. House? Nobody. I hope no one is advising him. Let him keep doing yes. what he's doing. He has a bunch Let of advisors, actually. Right. And they the are crazy, advising him. The and crazy giving thing him is Bannon, of all people, actually, apparently, according to reports, was the one section. who advised him. No, who advised him not to do the Comey firing at that time. He actually, Bannon, of all well, people. He wasn't listening yeah. to him. By the way, I thought Rick Wilson... A Republican strategist uh, was on MSNBC Friday, and I mentioned this on the radio. Said everything Trump touches dies. Yeah, I heard. <laughs> and yes. I thought, I said, wow, but, what a but, great. And he will throw. Right. He will throw anybody under the bus. That's right. He is not to be trusted. He's an He wants loyalty for himself, but That's he has it. no loyalty for anyone on the planet except for maybe Putin. But, well, well, actually, no. There's someone else. The uh, his personal bodyguard, yes, uh, mm -hmm. he Schiller, I think Keith his name. Schiller, former Keith New York Schiller, NYPD, because he's been with him for a long Since time. Since 1999, he's the one who actually gave him the paperwork to go over to the FBI to and deliver, deliver the termination notice. So your personal bodyguard, <laughs> out of everyone in your administration, yeah. mm -hmm. you give it to that your personal you insight, bodyguard, right? right? So it's just it's very very telling, right? And all the reports, and, and, you, and you read, you know, all the autobiographies, um, this, his bodyguard comes up many, many times, is, has have answering that question, I'm loyal to you. Right. Through you thick know, and thin, we ride hard, but, I'm loyal to you. And he's being sued, Slate, by the way. He's Slate. being sued. The bodyguard's being sued by, whom? Uh, by a, a protester uh, who he slugged and is on yeah. video right. uh, during one of the uh, But events. as a cineast, you would appreciate this comment. I wish everyone could take the last four months of the Trump uh, uh, regime activity, everything that's been on camera, everything that's been visual, turn off the audio. You know, uh, some of the greatest uh, uh, filmmakers uh, and cinematographers have said, you should be able tell to, to tell a story without, without, vi without audio. Just watch. This past week alone, Comey getting fired and then juxtapose that with visuals of Trump with the Russians. The story itself with no audio <laughs> would but, tell the story. But, 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 but the cosmic portent <laughs> of things Ooh. to come. Ooh. Ooh. Cosmic one portent. One more time. Well, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Say that again. I got it. What was it? What, 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 was it? What, what, what that means <laughs> is. What are you talking about, Willis? <laughs> yeah, right. The what are you that, talking about, Willis? <laughs> that's that Princeton education. <laughs> I'm a witness. The shape of things to come. Who else visited this week? Henry Kissinger. Oh, yes. 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 Right. Watergate. I thought that was poetic. That was, that was weird. Weird. Yeah. Yeah. Who that people, was cosmic. Who, pe yeah. who people I mean, have called a war optics, criminal. Wouldn't you think that this is a bad move to sit oh, down God. with him when everybody's accusing you of being Nixonian? Right. And, and you, like, got, you have worse Kissinger. Than Nixon. Oh, yeah. Kissinger. 
you know, uh, a, you know a couple other quickies before we move on. Well, well, we had an image. I don't know if RB had that. We had an image since there were so many parallels to oh, yes. to Nixon out there. I don't know, RB, if, if you have that out there. But I thought that this cartoon, it was a great cartoon. captured it perfectly. Which one? Uh, well, if we have it, you'll see it. Right. If not, then it I have looks to explain like Nixon, it. Right. But it's don't have it. So <laughs> it also, was, um, but it actually, they they had. Um, a picture of 45 doing his Nixon imperson- imperson- impersonation. Oh, yes. Saying, uh, yes. I am not a crook. Right, yeah. right, <laughs> yes. right. So it looks like the consensus online is that he's not going to be impeached. Mm-hmm. Uh, Leslie, Leslie Smith is saying, that's right, it's never going to happen unless the power behind the power orders it to be done. Another comment here, he's not taking any advice from anyone. He's also arrogant. He only wants yes men in his, in his that's cabinet. Right. And then uh, Hassan Ali says, talking loud and saying nothing. That's right. That's but you know, right. I want to comment. We are the power. Yes. We are the voters. You we are the citizenry. This. If we do what we are supposed to, practice participatory democracy, we are the right. power. Right. We have to take it back. We can do this in 2018. Yeah. We can we start power. in 17. That's right. This year. That's right. There are a number of Senate seats up. And, and governorships. And, and, Congress, and, and Congress seats. Right. We can do this now. Right. And that's the way you send the message. By right. the way, a couple of things. Uh, FBI informants say that James Comey didn't ask to meet 45 for dinner. Uh, it was the White House who said, come on over for dinner back in January. Okay. Another lie. Because Trump was saying that Comey asked for dinner. And that's not true. Um uh, Comey asked to was asked me mentioned before asked to take a loyalty pledge. He refuses. I'll give you my honesty. I'll pledge you my honesty, but I am not going to pledge you my lo- loyalty. Wait, what are you talking about? Well, isn't Comey uh, about? speaking uh, uh, before the Senate uh, Senate committee again this week? He this was coming scheduled, week? but dig this. Uh, late yesterday, huh. uh, Comey's person, uh, somebody close to him, says that Comey will testify but he wants to testify not behind closed doors in but in public, public. yes he said, i'm going to do that matter. if it's behind closed doors forget about it i'm going to he's i'm i'm challenging it basically he's throwing down the challenge right. to 45 look you think you got something all right you think the tapes whatever whatever you got i'm challenging you now you know i'm bringing it on what you got and i i guarantee he's going back down once again by and, the way and he probably will disclose a little bit of what's going on in terms of the investigation you watch. Mm-hmm. And there also been some I don't know how to term I was going to say There's aggressive but right there. I, I don't I don't oh, there you go. speaking is. relatively the FBI raided some GOP fundraising operations mm-hmm. uh this week, right? Uh one connected to Paul Manafort mm-hmm. yep. who early on had to drop out because he was a he, foreign he, agent he, to he, Ukraine right and, because he had connections to the in the Ukraine where millions of dollars were literally being funneled to him to him to the United States his name were on his name was on uh, a number of uh, 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 what do you call it uh, books invoices invoices books, and yeah. books uh, of monies being yeah. uh, uh, funneled to him I mean this stinks to high heaven oh, God. well you know so you know, there was a report that came out this week about um, he his, his taxes, right? So he hired a law firm. Yes. Now the law firm, the same law firm the, that that has a lot of business with Russia. So right, right there, um, they came out and wow. they had the expression <laughs> that um, oh, well, you know, other than a few exceptions, there's no cl- there's no evidence of him his income coming from Russia and and and. In the last 10 years. Now, now yeah. when you think about a few exceptions, when you look at the actual cases they cited, it's over $50 million. Mm-hmm. So if you're thinking few exceptions <laughs> is more than $50 million, <laughs> you're, you're a little distorted around things. The other thing is his, his personal taxes are not going to show anything up to Russia, right? Just by the nature of his business, right? Because he's not, he will never receive money directly from Russia. That's not the way he's run this scam. The way he's run the scam is he gets these properties or he has inside information to properties. He has to get investors to go into the to, to invest in the properties. Those investors are not given the money to Trump's organization. They give it to other organizations. Trump's organization 
gets a commission from that other one. So he will always have this ability to say, I didn't know where the money came from. Mm. It's but coming from this other one. But judge. Now, the pressure, the pressure he's going to feel is the FBI will find smoking guns on the Roger Stones, the Carter Pages. But not on him. But, but not directly on him. And then the question is, as you know, you've worked in the federal um, government out there, they squeeze individuals to roll over on someone. Right. So I don't believe they'll find a smoking gun in his taxes from Russia, but it'll it'll be the breadcrumbs that they assemble together that's going to make a very very nasty tasting sandwich for him. But but judge there are the institute the federal institutions uh can do forensic uh accounting, uh, accounting and in, in, and investigating they can't find where the dots are uh, lead to. Yeah, they have the capacity. They have to the do capacity. That. They can. Well, well, you saw that in in the um, with, with Clapper and Yates, and a lot of the the, the Senate members actually went on and they talked about um, the the looseness of the U.S. laws around transparency, and they actually went. I think Sally Yates went as far as saying that we're far behind the rest of the world in terms of transparency with these shell companies and how. The United States has become a haven to actually <laughs> put foreign investments to hide from criminal activity mm. and other things when it used outside. To be the other way around. When it used to be the other way yeah. around. Well, yes. you won't believe how advanced the F the FBI has become over the years, especially in tracking uh, accounts and tracking transactions. If they want to, they can they can really go into a forensic tracking process that will or could reveal some transactions, foreign transactions with, 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 with Trump. They can track it, but it's gonna have to be well thought out yeah, and, well, and very, irony to that. very deep. Here's some irony to that. Their abilities to do this goes way back to Al Capone, right? Because oh, you yeah. think about it, they got Capone not on the criminal stuff, but on his right. taxes. On, on his taxes. Mm -hmm. But it in, in Hoover, another former FBI, he accelerated a lot of it. But they took another leap after 9-11 when they put a lot of Homeland Security, you know, uh, rules and laws in place that allowed them to see, to see where terrorist organizations, their money was flowing out there. So you're right. They do have the capability. And I just think it would be a nice irony that that capability that we put in place to stop really, National, really bad terrorists right. actually captures this incompetent individual who is leading the country. Well, yeah. all we know is that, sir, the, as I said before, the vice is closing on Sir Tweet a lot, and um, it's going to catch up to him. By the way, I think that uh, the uh, the turning point is going to be the tweet uh, uh, to Comey about uh, tape, tape recordings tape. and that sort of thing. I think that that's going to be um, the the real big moment of, for for yeah, they, because he screwed up. He screwed up and put that in writing. And um, no, no, so you don't make threats like so, that. So connect the dot with that. Uh, if there are no tape recordings, then it's another lie. Right. Uh, but what will, could it lead to? Well, what it, could it lead to legally in terms of? But you're not supposed to be uh, taping someone, folks someone without Someone said it, their, it has something to do with knowledge. presidential uh, executive privilege. Someone made the connection that lying about that particular thing, whether you have recordings or no recordings, and accusing someone of maybe having them too, uh, that that discussion of that in legal proceedings removes executive privilege from the president. He can't. Uh, he can't. Uh, he can't claim it. He can't claim executive privilege. If it's related to a, his criminal conduct, executive privilege will not uh, hide that or Won't will not protect him. Protect him at all you got to go back to nixon you remember yes. nixon yes. was faced with a situation where um he thought the watergate tapes were executive privilege exactly and, and they said right. no right exactly and then exactly. he made up his own version of the tapes yes. uh race tapes it, right and then they say no we want the actual tapes right. not yeah. the executive not privilege is, is very limited in, in what it uh, protects and that would not be one of the one of the ways to uh, protect uh, you know, 45 at this point in time. If we reach that critical point, and I hope we do, Trump will probably resign before he would let himself be impeached. Be impeached. Yeah, I think you're because right it, he's he's such a nar narcissist. Oh. Mm -hmm. Impeachment 
right. would be dragging him through the mud. It would and be the would, ultimate embarrassment. Right. right. I think that he, like Nixon, would resign rather than actually go through the impeachment. Actually, I, I, I think just the opposite for the very reason that you stated. He is such a narcissist that he will go, he will take the ship down with him. He will say, okay, uh, uh, impeach me. Let the people decide. Let the people judge. I just the question, you. I, 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 I just people bleep, meaning con the Congress I just bleeped and the you a little bit, you know. You just what? I just bleeped you. What did I do? What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? What do you, did I say something? What do you mean? You, you, you said, uh, didn't you say some uh, S-H-I-T? No. 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 no, I didn't say that. I think you're hearing words. Oh, I thought you were. It's the sunglasses. Yeah, I think it is. I don't, I don't use profanity. I do. The only profane word I use on this broadcast is Trump. Okay. That's the only profane word I use. No, but I think. That was a good one. I like that. That was a good one. I think he will face impeachment. He'll go down with the ship, mm -hmm. and uh, he'll take others with him. But, or but, he will but try that's to, the problem. He has. To, if he goes down, others go too. Yes, they will. Yes. And I don't know that they're gonna let that happen so easily. But he's good. He's Just like with the Comey firing, there must have been intense discussions over that amongst his advisors yeah, of course. as to whether to do it or not. Well, they they, they made up their mind. So. They, they made up their mind. I don't think so. I don't think so. Well, they, 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 no, they were so. like, well, like Trump, he is an like, autocrat. Like 45 said, they, the decision to do this, uh, forget about the uh, Hillary emails and all that crap. That was not. What happened was Trump, uh, 45, or Sir tweet a lot, releases a tweet uh, on March 4th uh, basically saying, uh, that uh, President Barack Obama bugged uh, the uh, Trump Tower. That Monday, Comey goes before the House Intelligence Committee and says that's not true. And he said, not only that, we've been investigating the Trump-Russian connection since July. That's when they decided to do it. But let, right let, there. Yeah. But let's look, I, at, well, let's look but, at the paper trail. Yep. Let's look at the paper trail. Or the Twitter uh, trail. Uh, the Twitter uh, trail. Uh, <laughs> Sessions, Rodstein. Rodstein creates the written rationale for firing Comey, which was the lie, the first lie, that uh, the way that uh, uh, Comey treated Hillary Clinton and uh, about the emails and then okay. reinvestigated like we're that. that we're <laughs> supposed to believe that for that reason, mm -hmm. uh, uh, proffered by Ro 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 Rosenstein that that's the reason why Trump uh, fired him, gave him reason. Sessions comes in and says, yeah, I buy that. He's not even supposed to be involved even, no. because he's recused himself. That's right. Right? Yeah, that's right. I, I'll put my imprimatur on this. And those two documents are supposed to be the public reasoning, rationale, raison d'etre, for Trump firing Comey. Then Trump, in his, frank, in, in his Freudian way, goes on an interview with Lester Holt. You, you and missed, then and you're you missed one. Pence you missed one. Also. But you missed one. Yeah. In between Mike, there, Mike Pence, Pence yep. yeah. and the press secretary send out messages doubling down the same thing. on yep. mm -hmm. the uh, Rosenstein and mm -hmm. the Sessions memo. So he, they, they were all trying to be around it. And then, and then Trump says, oh, all that's BS. I was going to fire him anyway. And you know, I was going to fire him because uh, this Trump and Russia thing, it's all a fake, fake news. news. It's a lie. You know, and I was, uh, he, done, he, he blew all of his rationale, reasoning, legal reasoning, out the window. Yeah, but look who he put forward. Uh, on the press piece, uh, he put, what's her name? Sarah uh, Huckabee, Huckabee Sanders. Sanders. Yeah. He put her out Mike front. Mike Huckabee's daughter. That's a deputy instead, press secretary. Yeah. Right. Instead yeah, of uh, Spicer. Spicer, because right. Spicer was hiding it. Bushes. It would have blown it. He was too busy <laughs> hiding well, in the bushes. They say but, he had, uh, he's on Naval Reserve. Right. Right. Naval Reserve. But I think, okay, if he yeah, does, right. if, if Trump does he go. He can't get out of Naval Reserve. If, <laughs> come if, on. If Trump does go down, I think he's going to do it in the fashion that he's been doing it. 
trying to portray himself as the quote unquote victim. They're all out to get me. And his supporters will still stand of by him they will. because they have not gone anywhere, even though his overall polling has gone down. Well, we got they are there. still they are still with him. They're not going anywhere. And he's going to always use that narrative that they are out to get me. And this is what they did to me. And then take that army to whatever it is he may do. But his base is below 30 percent. It's below the, the it's in the mid thirties, low thirties. Right. So out of the yeah, overall, yes, well, now, overall, yes, but they're with yes, him. Yes, but, but what I'm suggesting, him, yeah, it always was, and they're with him still. Like but what, 90, I, what I'm suggesting, the people against him are much greater. Oh, yeah. But they were, so but just, they were during the election too, and we still lost. On Nither's point, though, that's the point. Congress, we gotta, we gotta Congress learn how to play the game. and the Senate are Republican majorities. Exactly. They haven't had that in a long time. Exactly. No, no. Easily. Right. Unless no, we no, fight not do it. By the way, so, right, go we'll vote. Go to some, go ahead. We'll go to some what they so, Veronica L. says, Achilles right. 45 will not resign because folks with the NPD are toxic people who want to ruin situations or people around him. Uh, well, like Rick, Rick um, uh, what do you call it? I meant that earlier. Rick Wilson. Uh, yeah, Rick Wilson said that on MSNBC Friday. Right. Yes. Everything he touches dies. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Uh, another comment here. I agree. He will resign before impeachment. He already he already said he didn't realize that the job was that hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is true. Who knew? Duh. Who knew? Duh. Yeah. But uh, interesting thing, um, before we go to the headline, uh, late Friday, uh, Sir tweeted a lot. Uh, you know, list out a bunch of names that are going to be uh, quizzed on Saturday uh, for replacement of James Comey as the um, head of the FBI. Uh, you had uh, Republican Senator John Cornyn of Texas. Oh, that's who, no cool. Who, 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 who believes he believes that this Russia thing is also fake, is fake unwarranted, news. and is a waste of time. Mm -hmm. You had Judge Michael Garcia of the New York State Court of Appeals and former U.S. Attorney for the Southern District. Uh, Alice Fisher, a former top Justice Department official. Andrew McCabe, who's the acting FBI director. You had four more, including Mike Rogers, a former mm -hmm. congressman, who is up there now. And, um, also former FBI. Yeah, right. Agent. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, the thing about it is the list seems political for a nonpartisan job. Uh, what's going on here? I don't I mean, What's he thinking? You know what he's you, you, thinking. Yeah, you already know, Slade. I want to. Well, I, I know. He's well, you know, rhetorical <laughs> question. Yeah, I know. You know, and, but you know, but it's it's a great question, though. Even though it's rhetorical, in fact, that the the reason that he he gives for Comey is <laughs> that he became his own man. Actually, if you go back to the Rosenstein um, memo, right? It, it, he talked more about he's lost his objectivity. They're supposed to be neutral. There's yeah. and that it's it's yeah. shaken the credibility of it. Pot calling and, the kettle black. And <laughs> and so, you know, when you think of it in forty five's world, no one should be on the stage bigger than him. So when he goes in front of these hearings and he expresses an opinion which actually got him in trouble with the Hillary uh pro because he expressed his opinions. You know, listen, he, he went out of his lane. Without a doubt, you know, the, 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 the debate going against what Loretta Lynch suggested, what um, the protocol was, and to give an opinion around um, her sloppiness, because he gave an opinion, not a, a lawful uh, reading of the facts. He went out of his lane. But that was over a year ago. <laughs> And to come back later on and say, well, that's the reason I'm doing it, was just, just yes. disingenuous oh, out there. So I, I do find it funny that they're going to want someone in here to regain the, the credibility FBI, and we're supposed to be neutral and just follow That's the law of the law. It's lost until this but, term is over. But the, 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 the former senator under Texas um, guy, Cornyn, yeah. he, he's not that. He's I, not no, important. I agree with he's the ACLU. Biased. The ACLU position is that McCabe yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. should keep the job right. and yeah. should carry through the investigation mm -hmm. of Trump. He mm -hmm. was working on it with Comey. He should be moved up into uh, the director's spot, and he should carry through the investigation. Yeah, and, and an important question that some people raised this week was what happened to that investigation? All the paperwork, where is that right they, now? Yeah, right. They went through his well, files. It's, it's in the hands of the FBI staff. Right. They, right. they have it. 
The and, lead investigator. Um, right, but but like for instance, like during the um, during Watergate or wherever, mm-hmm. the the offices were sealed. So I think a lot of people were raising that question this week, saying, "Has this stuff been sealed? Is it really safe? Or who?" Because remember, Comey was in L.A. Mm-hmm. when this all went down. Mm-hmm. He saw a flash behind him on mm-hmm. TV screen. It's embarrassing. It is. It is <laughs> embarrassing. It was an awful way to. I mean, it was mm-hmm. so beyond embarrassing and, for him. And who was in and, the White House this week? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. <laughs> with the, with with electronic equipment. Yep. Yeah. That they well, may have I snuck in there. I actually met Henry Kissinger. We talk yeah. about what Henry happened Henry to Warner, the papers. Yeah. Right. Well, exactly. the Daily News is out with a story today. Uh, Sunday's Daily News that says that Trump uh, wiretapped uh, Trump Tower. Yeah. I mean, he had the He's thing like, bugged. He, he trumped a, it himself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, he has surveillance. Probably. He has surveillance equipment in in the tower. But yeah. you know, again, when you go back to Nixon, right? Nixon was always known to be this paranoid individual. Right. Paranoid, which yes. caused him, Which caused him to okay committing of this crime. Mm-hmm. Again, the paranoia it's, is building. It's there. Everybody's against me. Loyalty. I got to surround myself. I'm, I'm going to use Twitter because I don't trust anybody else. Um, he's going down that same road, which is not surprising because he got into office doing the exact same thing that Nixon did in terms of uh, rise, you know, raising the level of fear in the country right. mm-hmm. that things were going, trying to tap into the southern base, right. the evangelicals, which Nixon did as well. Sure he did. So he he's following a lot of that game plan, and it's no surprise. And, and that he's, he's going down to this your path. point, Bobby, to portray himself as the quote law and order candidate. Yes. And on that point, I think we should talk about what Jeff Sessions is doing with the Justice Department. Oh, I, oh the, what God. happened this week? Basically, they're trying to yeah. bring back the mandatory, yeah. the minimum mandatory sentencing laws, mm. which have been proven mm. ineffective and, that's for marijuana and too. outrageous, proven yeah. racist, proven racist. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, and the reason why we have the pop- the prison population we have now. Right. And you exactly. know, and they're gonna and I know they're gonna go and they're gonna double down and say, Well, you know, all we're doing is what Clinton did and everything. Clinton at least has come out and apologized and actually said it was wrong. The way it's turned out, it was wrong. Now, he, he has a lot of a culpability in actually um, extending what Nixon put in place, what Reagan put in place, and he, he actually put the period on it to make it as bad as it was. But at least he took accountability. What Sessions is doing, and I, I had tweeted this out this week to re, to see this. You know, what's the definition of insanity? Keep doing the same thing over and over again with the same out, outcome out there. That's bad. This is going to be a bad outcome. You think we would have learned from our history, but we haven't. And yeah. what he's putting in place is just terrible. But, but, like but I also, said, but also, what scares me most. This is a very dangerous moment. Yes, mm-hmm. it is. And when these guys get in trouble, and I say these guys, I'm talking about past presidents. When they get in trouble like this, what do they usually resort to? War. They usually just, resort ah, to some go, type it. of mm-hmm. military action. Some kind of military action. action. Yeah. Like to I told you before, Pickett. From the domestic the, crisis. Thank you. And this is a very dangerous moment. Like I, mean, I told Pickett he, last he time, He already Syria. violated international law yes. by launching that strike against Syria. Uh, the the uh, North Koreans have told them, go screw yourself. We're yes. testing our body. They tested another they tested one like crazy. this week. It's a very dangerous moment. And, and an no unstable doubt. person. I mean, George Will, of all people, yes, who, of all who's no people. great friend of mine, George Will is openly saying that Trump is mentally unstable. He's not, right. well. He's not just saying incompetent. Mm-hmm. He's saying unstable. And that is not the man who should be commanding the military forces at this critical and dangerous moment. Right. If that could uh, be yeah. proven, that would be a basis for... Well, it'll um, either be uh, war as a distraction or terrorism to instill m- in, yes, in the more United fear. States to instill more fear in uh, uh, the Amer- hearts and minds of the American people, uh, which would then allow Sessions and Trump to put lockdown with police forces mm-hmm. around the black world, and yeah. brown communities. Thank you. Right. And, and folks, it's possible. I wanted to say something this week. The Reverend William Barber, and if you folks out there don't know who he is, he is arguably the closest brother we have to Dr. King today. He has led, uh, uh, he was as head of the NAACP in North Carolina. He's led uh, Moral Monday 
uh, protests for several years. Uh, he's a great man. He announced last this week, this past week, stepping that he down. is stepping down from his chairmanship of the North Carolina NAACP to lead a national poor people's movement uh, in, in, in respect for Dr. King, as well as the need right now for people around the country to come together. And he says silence is not an option. He's making a, uh, an announcement tomorrow in North Carolina, uh, chatting this up, uh, speaking about it, and there are various organizations prepared to work with uh, Brother Barber uh, in this incredible endeavor. I, uh, I, I, I urge everyone to follow what this brother says, go on YouTube, follow his, yeah, he's, uh, great. he's incredible. Um, if Very you, you want to be, if so, you if you want to make social change, listen to that brother and 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 let's get involved. Well, you more. Okay. Go ahead. Well, I, they just scrolled away. Yeah, so I was trying to get some, but they they went okay. through. So Nadia McLean says forty five would never sub subject himself to to that. Mm. Responding to a comment, and then we're uploading some more. Um, and pretty much everybody's agreeing that he's, or not everybody, but a lot of people are agreeing that he's not going to get impeached, or if he will, that he's going to portray himself as a victim. Well, I'm going to have the last laugh on that, but I think they're going to get him. I think they're going to get his ass. Um, so tweet a lot. They're coming after you. By the way, um, uh, we're going out to the open line, bottom line story, and every day you turn around, there's some kind of crazy nonsense on the airports, at the airports. Um, and now they're involving black folks. Before we wasn't involved until you had the situation that took case uh, took place in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, uh, scene of a brawl, Spear Airlines, uh, when 13 flights were canceled due to a labor dispute, and people got ticked off, and they started fighting at mm -hmm. the airport. Wow! The, I saw that video. It was yeah, crazy. the crazy it was video. Ridiculous. Then there was a flight, uh, a fight between passengers on a Southwest Airlines uh, flight uh, as the plane sat on the tarmac. This is in Burbank, California. And this involved people punching each other. Mm -hmm. Then you had an incident where um, a plane is about to land. A woman asked, can I go to the bathroom? And she said, no, you can't. Uh, the plane's going to be landing soon. Gave her a cup. What? Yes. Are you uh, serious? No, I'm serious. I'm no, this did not. <laughs> no, happen. I am yeah, serious. Yes, yes, I missed this. Yeah. You can't make yeah. this stuff up. No, folks. you can't. It gets then you crazy. just then you just had another brawl. Oh, you had, I had a situation. I'm sorry. On a plane, this is black folks now, who had a, a cake or some kind of thing like this. Cake. Yeah, cake. And they wanted to bring the cake on, the, and they told them no, you can't bring, and they kicked them off the flight. Let me tell you, this well, is a. It, they brought this, the cake on, on the on plane. On the plane, yeah. And then the, the, the stewardess said, uh, you need to take that down and put it someplace else underneath the seat. Yeah, right. And they attempted to do that. And then, and then another <laughs> stewardess comes along and says, no, you got to take it off the plane. All right. And the result was they deplaned the whole the goddamn whole plane. plane. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, but I, I think what this speaks to, <laughs> brothers and sisters, I think what this speaks oh, God, to. It's crazy. We are now living in the age of Trump where there is no safe haven for civility, <laughs> for discussion. Corporations, companies treat customers like filth, take our money, exploit us. We don't, we're not polite with each other. There is no civil discourse. It's, we watch television, we watch reality TV, and well, there, this started and there, before Trump, but and, he just well, normalized well, it. Well, I, I just, no, right, yeah. he normalized it. That's why yeah. I'm using it, right. that term, the age of Trump. It is a culmination of, uh, I think, 10, 15, 20 years of a coarsening of civil discourse. Uh, we treat each other like commodities and objects, and we can dis discard each other. Hillary Clinton can use, I was going to refer to what you said about Bill Clinton apologizing for what he did for, in public policy, but remember, people didn't vote for Hillary Clinton because they remember her calling right. young black men super Predator. predators. Super predators. Yeah. So we, 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 
we treat each other. I mean, if we just right. follow the golden but to rule. The, to this point about the airlines and the craziness of flying, I didn't get to fully look into the details, but Simone Sanders, who is the former spokesperson for Bernie Sanders, was apparently flying, uh, I think, I forget where she was flying out of, but on American Airlines, there was some dispute at the counter, and they called the cops on her. Yeah. So, And she's been like tweeting a storm. I got to go back yeah. and look into the details. But basically, there was just a dispute, and they ended up, I think there were several officers that came down and her point is like you know it's great that I'm on TV and now you guys are paying attention but this should not happen and this is happening to black women all the time. The first response shouldn't be Mil a militaristic right. police state mentality that's and what action. We're, we're yes, police that's exactly. Right. Yeah. And, that's and that happens. has been exactly. happening for state, a long time. Exactly. Yeah. You know, but you know, but, but uh, well, I was going to say that civility is the disappearing from civilian airlines. Should the government step in they're already in though Bob. but i mean yeah. but, but i mean really but, step but, but in. think about and right so but so and take control of what's going on governments are already in, in control of airlines right so you have the faa so they guide they provide guidance. i'm talking about the airport no no no. i'm talking about fine right mm -hmm. but every state every i think every airport in the united states except for one is run by either the state that government that they're in or the federal government or some combination of it. Right. So they work on infrastructure pieces and that's how they get these, you know, the mess that we have at LaGuardia here. So governments are already in. The, the companies themselves just do a horrible job promoting service. Back in the day, many of our listeners probably won't remember it, I, I remember it, but you know, Eastern Airlines and TWA and Pan Am and Delta even back in the day, they were known for having service. It was, they were happy to have you there. There were actually some, um, some, some guidance they had that if you flew first class, you had to dress and act a certain way right. to get in the first that. class. Mm -hmm. But then what happened is when they started to deregulate and they had to get some That's money. That's the key word, right, deregulation. They deregulated them. But the deregulation allowed the companies to run on their own and then they became chasing profits. And they and they've lost their way. And most corporate, most corporations want to do the right things for people. I don't but know they, about but that. They get, but they get twisted. <laughs> they get twisted when they pursue just the financial side. And as a result, you that's start why to Jesus say, threw the money changes out the you, temple. Right. You start to you start to de-emphasize certain things. So you've seen every one of these companies, these airlines that have had these issues have come back and said, that's not what we're about. And then they institute more training, and then you come to find out that an individual who worked there used some horrible, horrible personal judgment out there. But I can tell you, most companies, because it would kill their profits. If they, if they had a reputation of, yeah, we're always going to call a police on you anytime you object to something, in this day and age, people will not fly them. So they want to do the right things, they just don't know how to do it all the time. And then they have employees who just lose their mind. There was no reason that 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 flight attendant gave that woman with the baby in her arms, snatching yeah. the, oh, stroller the stroller out of her hand. The company would not put that in any kind of training. But I think that you was that individual doing exactly what you're saying, feeling as though in this day and age, I can express myself and act like a jerk. But I think you raised you. You made the you, you, you used the correct word deregulation you said that the federal government has been involved and then states also have involvement in it but that key word deregulation over the past 20 years we have to remember we've had eight years of bush uh mm -hmm. and 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 clinton and yep. there has been ongoing government deregulation of oversight of and lacks and lacks attention to uh, corporations and their practices, which then allowed corporations to uh, look at profits and not uh, the people. And so I agree with you. The problem is, is that the federal government and state governments have allowed corporations through deregulation to do what they do best, which is to look at the bottom line and not the people. And that we are now seeing manifest as total incivility. So, so I, I'll give you a little bit more. The deregulation part for the airlines was more about reducing the amount of subsidies that actually took away money from them. 
They didn't do anything until a few years ago when the the, the customer bill of rights in the airline. So you do have but within the the, the, air, the the there's a bill of a customer bill of rights now that actually says, which is a form of regulation, what airlines can't do. They can't have you sitting on the tarmac, mm -hmm. you know, for a hundred hours. But what without did these anything. corporations? What did these airlines do in response to uh, cutbacks of monies? They 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 charged you for this. Oh, they they charge, charge you for they charge right. you for every breathing. Bag. So for bag. Which, which means like which like means is that they continue to commodify the consumer. They co they continue to rob and rape and pillage the consumer because the federal government has taken government monies, public yep. funds, for the airlines. If the airlines are a are beyond just corporations and should be considered a public uh, utility. Right. utility, it would change. So it looks like um, our viewers are agreeing. They're saying they've seen a decline in services. And then Vaughn Pickett Williams says, Bobby, you're right. But remember, most airlines are not in the passenger business. The freight is what pays the bills. Right, freight carriers. Um, yeah. Yeah. Profit sharing does play a big part in airline deregulation. And then Edward Latson says most corporations want to do the right thing for shareholders. Trust me. For shareholders. For tr trust That's me, key. That is true. Trust me. Um, I've never been treated better from a company more than when I became a shareholder. Ooh, very nice. Mm -hmm. By the way, uh, we're talking about the airlines. What the hell's going on at Penn Station? Now, you're a docile commuter. You <laughs> mind your own business. You, but that place has turned into a zoo. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you had this week. The governor of New York, Andrew Cuomo, and New Jersey, <laughs> Krispy Kreme, Christy, Bob Pickett's friend, uh, <laughs> called for the privatization of Penn Station. Yeah, that place is nuts. Yeah. I don't even want to go near it. It's that bad. Yeah, it's a madhouse over it's there. It's crazy. It, and it has a lot to do with how this country has neglected its public infrastructure yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. over the last half century, maybe more than half a century. I mean, I was just reading something earlier in the week by someone who uh, I believe they were in, I think they were in England, actually, and talking about the tubes, riding mm -hmm. the tubes in England, and what a world of difference it Huge. was mm -hmm. than Huge riding difference. the subways here in New York. And quite frankly, I think, uh, just going back to the previous discussion about the airlines, I haven't seen a situation where privatizing a public entity has, in fact, resulted in its improvement. When the privateers come in, it's about the bottom line. Mm -hmm. They start cutting back on stuff so that a profit can be yeah. made, and it, it, it results in overall deterioration. I think what we need is a policy change. We probably, and it's interesting because here's a contradiction. Did not Trump say he campaigned on a plank that he right. was going to invest a trillion dollars right. mm -hmm. in infrastructure Hello. improvement. That's probably going to be another lie. For the forgotten <laughs> man. Yeah, yeah, for the forgotten right. man who he's forgotten. forgotten. You know, <laughs> uh, we need a policy change in this country that redirects us yep. back to improving our inf infrastructure. In Newark, New Jersey, there is a city subway. This subway, I found out some years ago, was a public works project correct of the WPA, great depression of the of new the, deal the wpa it runs along what used to have used to be a canal in newark hmm. and during the depression they put thousands of people to work in newark to drain this canal Right. to lay the foundation. That subway has been running since 1938. Wow. Mm. It mm. opened in 38. Now and, they don't and call connects, it. And connects to the Newark Penn Station. That's right. It connects to Newark Penn Station. Now they don't even call it subway anymore. They call it the light rail because they put these new cars on there. Mm. The point I'm making is, is that there was a direction during the Depression when we had uh, a Depression-level unemployment we're going to solve this problem. The government stepped in, created public programs, put people back to work, 
and literally rebuilt the country. In fact, if you look at most of the great construction projects that happened in this country, Boulder they, Dam, they happened right. from during yep. the uh, FDR the, administration right, FDR. to the, the Eisen, to the right. to actually to the Eisenhower administration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was Eisenhower that put in uh, that put the work in for the interstate highway system. Right. So. We have to return to that. And yeah, and to, so, your, to your point, Larry, yes. that's the one thing that both sides of the aisle say that they can agree to work on. <laughs> the Democrats say that they want to work with the Republicans, that they want to work with this president on infrastructure improvement. And if they right. got together, that would actually benefit the people. It would make the country strong again, America first. It all goes in line with that. But that's something, like you said, that he campaigned on but has not focused no, on. I've never heard whatsoever. McConnell or Ryan right. but go back say to, that. Go back to never. Obama, right? So no, no, I'm talking about the Democrats saying that they would work right. with yeah, but, Republicans right, but the on Republicans that. have not said in kind but but no. come back come back to Obama right so when he was trying to get the, the country out of the recession he did talk about he was putting money aside for infrastructure which he did and he faced opposition from mm -hmm. the Republicans That's right. well yeah because they didn't want him to succeed on anything Anybody. remember well, their number right. one goal as McConnell said was to make sure that he was a one-term president right. and, and to not obstruct only that him. Uh, they took a pledge uh, on um, the, uh, January 21st, uh, 2009, yeah. to obstruct Barack Obama. That's what Obama. I'm saying. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. That's right. when they did. They, they, they yeah. Ryan, McCarthy, that whole bunch. McConnell. All, yeah, all those guys. They took that pledge. Yeah. And they said, no, we're not going to do anything, no matter what this guy wants. They right. got together, had a dinner. They had a big dinner. That night. Yeah. That yeah. In yeah. D.C. And, and yeah. what we what we have today is in part right. the right. outcome right. of, oh, that. Absolutely. of that. I mean, yeah, it's we, amazing. We they go. try to pin it on him and say that he divided this nation. Yeah. Right. That when they are the ones who completely did it themselves, right. Right. obstructed him, and caused all this but division. I want to go back to Bob's uh, point before about... Uh, and Achille about civility. The fact of the matter is, since the Trump campaign, now we've seen a deterioration of civil society over the last 30, 20 years. 40 years. Yeah, telling people go, off, go back call, to Nixon. Yeah, saying, oh, but oh, we oh. have definitely seen a spike in hate crime. Yes. This is a yes. measurable, yes. Oh, yes. objective yes. fact. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. A spike yes. in hate crimes yes. since the Trump campaign, right. since his inauguration not only that there's a dangerous uh, uh tendency now we see the appearance of white supremacist racist organizations oh. on college yeah. campuses openly recruiting did, did you yeah. see the torches the, last okay, night so this is i was no. just showing oh. slaves. Uh, old so hitler this style was, torch no look, th i wish we could like zoom in on the camera here but so this was in charlottesville virginia the alt-right with richard spencer and and the the new crop of folks there were chanting quote russia is our friend near statue of robert e lee and they had their torches they had out torches yes. torches yes. like actual, hitler like yes. the nazis yes. Yes. what do you have to say about that like, ladies and gentlemen yeah. you're uh, watching us right now for everybody, so what's going for on? everybody who said we were engaging in hyperbole, right. when, when these we people, compared these and, and these guys, 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 let's connect, but let's yeah. connect the dots. They're so emboldened Let's connect right now. the dots. What image did we see? Which image did Trump allow the Russians to show all over the planet after he fires FBI Comey? What image did he allow us to see in the White House? Him smiling, shaking hands with two, two Russian emissaries. I'm telling you, this kind of rise of a fascist white yeah. republic, or global republic, global. I've been is saying that not forever. a global. joke. Yeah. But, so you talk yeah. about images, right? So just back to, to what Nitha just talked about, right? That image, right? So it should be all over the news. And, and it's it will not, be. Not, but, right? but it will be on alt-right news. But, it will be but think in of it, Breitbart. The image of but, at night, at night, you see a mob of people with the torches. Mayor, the mayor compared it now, to a KKK you, exactly, rally. Exactly, right? The so mayor thankfully himself. the mayor said it that, was. right? Was, but when you look at when you look at people of color when they're out protesting, they're not walking around with torches because the right because what look look let's be clear are we americans absolutely but do they think we're americans no we can't do what they can do why they are endowed with white skin privilege and racist assumptions of inferiority and superiority that's the bottom line and now jeff sessions are going to 
of us in jail. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. Well, that's Jefferson Board God Sessions. By the way, Sports Shorts is next. Uh, we're getting ready to lock things up. And uh, it is Derek G today. I got my Derek G to hat. I got number two on the side and then the back there. Uh, they'll be celebrating up in the Bronx, uh, especially this evening. Um, folks will be coming out. Um, they're playing a doubleheader, by the way. Uh, but you know, the folks who had tickets for yesterday's rained out game will have to uh, exchange them for another game, not this one coming up. Uh, you buy a ticket today, <coughs> boom, you're in there, see both games. And the Jeter ceremony gets underway at around two, uh, 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock this evening. His uh, number two will be retired, and his plaque will be hung at Monument Park. And uh, nice move. Jeter played a lot of years for the Yankees starting, what, in uh, 96? Uh, Full time. I remember covering it. You remember doing yeah, it, Bobby, yeah, as well. Yeah. You and I. And uh, going to a lot of these crazy games. And it may turn out that um, uh, Derek uh, will become an owner, a co-owner well, of the uh, t- baseball it's, team. It's, it's a maybe, little maybe, shaky maybe, round maybe. right now. He, he, he's part of a, uh, a, a group, and there's a lot of competition for it. He's partnering with Jeb, Jed Bush. Uh, yeah, Jeb, Jeb. Right, Jeb, Jeb. Bush. Mm-hmm. Um, for it, the the Marlins are going for north of 1.3 billion dollars. Um, <laughs> and the way Major League has it set up, you have to have a certain amount of cash on hand. Yes, to do it, so you can't finance a, a big portion of it. Oh. Th- their bid is not the top bid. Um, some premature reports came out because right. Jeter's name was associated with it, and it wasn't the Yankees that you know he had won, and he he came out and said, no, that's uh, that's not the case. And the commissioner of Major League came out and said, no, that's not the case. I believe uh, Mitt Romney actually is part of a group that is going after the Marlins as well. Um, the Marlins are not worth that amount of money, um, which just shocked me because um, they can barely fill that, that stadium yeah. um, out there. But anyway, so, you know, Derek Jeter, you know, he, he the thing that, that stands out to me about him is he wasn't – the greatest ball player no. ever, right? He wasn't the the say hey Willie Mays. He 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 wasn't Hank Aaron, Jackie Robinson. He wasn't, but he was a model of consistency. For him to play as long as he did at a at a high level, um, with no controversy, he's one of those individuals who respected the game. He never made himself bigger than the game. He contributed to the game. And, you know, he, he never sought headlines. He, matter of fact, did everything in his power to suppress those when the members of the media would try to get into his personal life, who's he's dating, what's, you know, what's his, uh, how does he date all these supermodels and what's his rituals, does he put them in cabs afterwards and night out and send them gift baskets. And it was just crazy the way – uh, a star in New York City was treated, and he did a fantastic job of making the story about Derek Jeter really about the Yankees and not about Derek Jeter. Right. You as uh, a gentleman. Well, too. he's going to be in the Hall of Fame testimony. in a couple of what? years. He'll be elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame, no doubt about it, in and a man, couple of man, years. Man, and he, was uh, a, he was appreciative of the fans, too. Mm-hmm. May, I make a, may I make a plea, though? I would hope that all of these very wealthy black men and women who make million dollar contracts and who seek uh, corporate ownership of various uh, teams and what have you. That's where many African Americans get their riches when they succeed. Um, well, I would he- like them I would like them to think about supporting the rise of black think tanks, black institutions, progressive institutions, uh, 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 legal organizations that defend and protect the, the, the rights of young black and Latin men and y- boys and girls, the people. I would hope that they would, y- building black banks, founding black banks and other institutions that benefit the people. Um, just you know, just well, think about it. Well, Jeter has his turn to foundation. Uh, oh, his, I'm not suggesting uh, he doesn't. Yeah, he I'm has, not, I'm not, yeah. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. I wasn't pointing at Jeter at all. Mm-hmm. I was making a, a broader uh, uh, plea. Yeah. No. By the way, um, uh, one quick thing uh, on one of the sports note, uh, Matt Harvey is uh, back and <laughs> losing as usual. Uh, he didn't have a, a very good outing, but uh, Matt Harvey is back. Uh, he went AWOL last week. A lot of drama about that, Bobby. What was that all about? Well, so he <laughs> – <laughs> again, so – 
the, he went the, partying. The, the opposite side yeah. of Derek Jeter, right? So yeah, totally he's opposite. also he's coming back from injury. He has a nickname, the Dark Knight. He was appointed by members of the media and the fans that, you know, he is the next great pitcher in New York. And so he was getting accolades way before his time. And he really hasn't produced to that Ooh. level through a variety of reasons. So now he's healthy, but he was supposed to pitch um, on Sunday and Saturday, you know, a day of rest. Instead of coming to the stadium, he didn't show up. And he texts to say that he has some migraines and that he's not going to make it. They sent the team, the Mets sent security to his house to double check that, right? So there's a problem there when they don't even believe you. Because the wow. night before, security. the That's night crazy. before, yeah, right there. <laughs> the night before, he's hanging out at a, a New York City nightclub, you know, with his friends, his, his entourage or crew, who, whatever way, his people. He could have a headache. And, and, well, yeah, and here's the reason possibly why. So yeah, they're out up. until 4 or 5 in the morning. Then he goes to play golf uh -huh. Saturday morning and then gets back to his place because the Nets had played later that day, and he took a nap and woke up with a headache. Now, I'm just telling you, when I hung out like that, <laughs> there's a reason why I probably had a headache. I yeah. probably was dehydrated because I was drinking stuff that yeah. I shouldn't have been drinking there you go. out there. So he's he has come forth and said, "Yeah, I, you know, I, I have a be I have to be more responsible and accountable to my team and apology." And he's seeking some kind of counsel. The other part of the story, though, is that he was supposedly distraught because the supermodel he was hanging with uh -huh. showed up at the Met um, with her ex boyfriend, who was a member of the New England Patriots, Julian <laughs> Edelman. Oh, and so they're saying that he's not handling. He, he was into the relationship wow. more than she was. <laughs> the, the point about it is, I don't care who you're dating, but you never heard those stories about Derek Jeter. Nope, never. Mm. Never so heard those. Barbara says, Derek Jeter um, helped every Yankee player. I love him and miss him, and I hope that he will he will own the Yankees team. My dad loved Derek Jeter. Also, we never missed watching a game together. Yeah, he was great. You know, he, So afterwards, he, he wanted to get his own voice, so he created the Players' Tribune, which is a vehicle – for players to to express their own stories as opposed to having someone misinterpret and quote them the wrong way. So he's done that. Um, and the last thing I'll say about Jer Derek Jeter, right? So he's married now. Um, he's they're expecting, expecting a child. Expecting a child. Daughter. And he came out and he said the reason why he waited until after his playing days to become a father was because he didn't feel as though he was in a good position to raise a child and be a professional. Wow. And he said, no knock against my teammates. I just saw how they committed themselves to their profession, but always At the expense were missing of their things to their family. Mm. Yeah. And I didn't want to do that. Right. And wow. he was raised, you know, he has a, a black father, a white, a white mother. So family means a lot to him. So he waited, intentionally waited until after his playing days right. to That's get wise. married and to have a child. What a nice he, thought. He, he's yeah. just, he's just. He's a real balanced guy. Exactly. Nice yeah. right. but, but, but not well, only that, well, though. We're going to close the show with that, as a matter of fact. Uh, Jeter on his website uh, put up a thank you to the fans. Yes. And we're going to lock out our open line online. He appreciated uh, the fans. Hour, yeah. Uh, with him saying, thank you, fans, for your support uh, all those uh, 20 some odd years he played. Yep. And uh, that's how we're going to say adios. And it's a nice expression. We want to thank all of you for joining us today. We'll see all of you same time, same place next week. Happy Mother's Day. And Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. And keep a good thought. And God bless all of you. Adios. Okay. That's it. That's it. Good show, guys. New York, I want to tell you a story about a kid who grew up in the Midwest in a town called Kalamazoo. 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 Quiet, unsure, and at times a little intimidated. A homebody at heart. About a kid with a dream. Who moved to a big city. To the big city. A kid who was just trying to keep up with everyone else. A lot was asked of that kid, and I always respected the challenge. To prove myself each and every day. The lights were always bright. The pace was always fast. The stakes were always high. And the expectations, higher. And in those difficult moments, those moments that feel unique to New York, you always showed me a sign. All I had to do was look. New York, you never forget how you looked out for me. And throughout 20 years in pinstripes, I learned that despite the pace and the pressure, one code truly makes the city go.
Get up each day. Put on your uniform. Go to work. Haz tu mejor y no vengan con excusas. That's all New York ever really asked for. And that's what I try to do. Thank you, New York, for asking a lot of me, for challenging me, for giving this kid a place to grow up. Today, I'm no longer that kid. I've hung up my uniform. And I know this much for a fact. I wouldn't be the person I am today without you. Because the truth is, no matter where you go in the world, when a place feels like home, as New York does to me, you never really leave. It'll always be with you. It'll always be with you. It will always be with you.